Hi, my name is Daniel Casey, and today we're going to be looking at the following question. Why Darktable? Well, the simple answer to that is, why not? I am a research scientist in river hydrology, and I've been using open source software over the past 10 years, and I've had very good results and very good success with some of these softwares. In particular, I've been using a software called uh, Project R, which basically I do all of my programming and all of my statistical analysis. Now, before we dive into Darktable a little bit more, let's look at open source software in general. I think in the past there has been some drawbacks in some of these softwares, mainly in uh, maybe books, manual development, or information being transferred to users. Uh, but since the past 10 years or so, a lot have come forward in terms of getting us to know some of these open software a lot better. And one source of this was YouTube. Now there's a lot of softwares that are open source and there are um, resource, resources uh, on YouTube to see how to uh, operate them. And Darktable is a very good example of that. Now, if you want to see my images, all of my images, uh, which are on Instagram, has been uh, treated with Darktable. The reason why I moved uh, into Darktable and processing some of my raw images is that uh, I was not totally satisfied with the uh, camera JPEG results. So uh, if you're like me, you will see that these softwares can really improve some of the images or the, or the look of some of your images, especially when you're taking some photographs and you're looking at the JPEG uh, results and saying, geez, that's not really what I was photographing. Or that's really not how the scene was like. And I think with software like these, uh, you, can, uh, you can reproduce some of these things. Now for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to go through some of the websites uh, that I find very resourceful uh, in, in, in learning Darktable and in learning some of the modules of Darktable. So the first site that I find uh, very useful is this by Bruce Williams Photography. This website provides over a hundred videos on Darktable. Most of the videos are between, let's say, 20 to 35 minutes. So, and most of the videos will cover a module and pretty much in, in detail. So this is for me one of the better sites to learn Darktable initially or learn the basics of Darktable. The next one that I would, uh, the next uh, YouTube channel that I find really, really resourceful is Raw Photography Tutorials. And here there is a Darktable from A to Z, which again looks at module individually and looks at the different uh, options or the different things that you could do in each in each module and here the uh, the length of some of these videos are generally less than 15 minutes but some may be longer and you can also have uh, from this YouTube site uh, uh, an image processing like they will go through the workflow of, of an image processing so you have some of these examples as well now the next one that I like is uh, Rico Richardson uh, he talks about, again, different modules. What I like about Rico is that his, um, his, his uh, videos on YouTube are, are much shorter. They're generally less than 10 minutes, and it's not going to cover the whole thing in the module, but it's going to give you an example of how to do something useful within the module, and I like that with this uh, YouTube channel. The next one that I also like is a dabble in photography. A dabble in photography, one of the points which is uh, really good for dabble in photography is that you have both videos in English and in French. So for the francophones out there, you can uh, learn Dark Table uh, with the same information which is provided both in English and French. And this YouTube channel, if you really want to understand masks, there's excellent uh, videos on masking uh, out of this uh, channel. 
Some of the uh, videos are a little longer, but again, for the for the mask or mastering mask, this was my sort of uh, go-to uh, channel. Now the next one is Aurélien Pierre. Aurélien Pierre has, uh, I think he's one of the developers of uh, some of the modules in Dark Table. And if you want to go or dive more into some of these modules and understand, which is something that I really appreciate myself, understand potentially some of the, you know, calculations or some of the physics behind some of these uh, the designs of these modules. And I think it's very important in order to properly use them. Uh, he does an excellent job of explaining some of these things. His videos are sometimes longer, close to an hour or so. But I think if you, again, if you're like me and really like to get a lot more in depth into the, the behind the scene type thing, this is an excellent YouTube channel to visit. Now, if you're more interested or if you're getting pretty good at Darktable and you're more interested in looking at, you know, uh, bringing some effects into some of your image processing, uh, this YouTube channel by Boris Hadjovicic, uh, I think is, oh, I probably didn't pronounce his name uh, right here, but anyway, this YouTube channel is an excellent one to do that, basically to bring, you know, different types of feel for your image, different types of colors or something like that. So that's one you should visit as well. Now, the next one is by Frank Walsh. I like his videos because uh, Frank Walsh usually goes through image processing and you really see, you know, not only you can appreciate some of the techniques that he has, you can look at some of the workflow, basically, you know, how he, how one would think about processing an image. And I find that to be useful as well. So that's the end of my presentation. And thanks for watching. And hopefully these videos will be useful for you.